got as far as the Haberton substation before we cut the lines. The interchange there just started dialing numbers at random. And the symptoms you're seeing match those we've been tracking here? Sickness, headaches, nosebleeds, eventual hemorrhage. Hello? Frank Appleton? Break a lost cowboy, this is Travelling Sherlock. You copy, over. You da bugger, Charlie. You don't do it when you're using the phone. You take this too seriously, Appleton, I'm telling you. It is serious. It's not larking about. You be listening to your number stations again, Frankie. It's not funny. <laughs> it's serious stuff. And you should mind it. Now then, I'm assuming this is about a pint. I am going to the Whistler. My round, I think. I'll not argue with that. Frank, have you seen the sky? It's amazing. Don't think I've ever seen anything like it. I didn't realize we were off to a poetry recital as well, Charlie. <sighs> Terry called this morning. Said there was a problem with Harvey. Said he couldn't get through to the vet, so I said I'd come round and take a look. There's a lot of dead birds today. More here, too, poor little things. I've been trying to get hold of Steve, and he always knows what to do. Got round here, and no sign of either of them. With any luck, the stupid creature will have run under a car. It's probably rabies. Come on, boy.
Wendy, I'm married. You have to stop this. He's still sweet on you, Elizabeth. He, he left. It's too late. You loved each other long before she came along. It's just about making things as they should be. Wendy, no. It's not like you won't bump into each other anyway. One drink, what can that hurt? <sighs> One drink, maybe. Oh, one <laughs> drink, wonderful. Grief, Wendy, you'll catch your death. What's happened? Stephen, thank oh. God. Listen, I need you to get to the junction box, see if there's a phone working. No, stay back! Don't come up here! Oh, Christ. Is that... Blood. 
bloody idiots! Where the hell did they think they were going? I think they must have thought they could walk out along the line. Well, there won't be any more trains now. You're a callous bastard, Stephen. Just pragmatic, Howard. Did you say there's a working phone in the junction box? I've lost my shoes. I lost my shoes, sir. There's arches on the green. They've taken my shoes, sir. Howard? Howard Lantham! You open the door this instant, young man. I lost my shoes. Now get up. Get up. I lost my shoes. What on earth are you doing here, Howard? Stephen. He told me to stay in case Lizzie phoned. Stephen, where is he? What are you doing with those birds? Concentrate, Howard. Where's Stephen? He said we couldn't help them. He took my shoes so I'd stay. Listen to me, Howard Lantham. You find your shoes and you get to the village. Find Father Jeremy. He'll give you some soup or something. Be off with you. Where are you going? I'm going to find my son. Then I'm going to ask him what on earth he thinks he's doing.
Rachel, darling, I'm sorry about taping over your music, but we, that is your dad and I, in case you come home, I mean, I know Mrs. Graves is looking after you over there, but just in case you come home, we wanted to let you know we're going to head over to Barb's. Evie! Evie! Sam, I'm leaving a message for Rachel. Are you going to say hello? Jesus Christ, Evie, we ain't got time for this. The bloody car won't start. We're going to have to walk. Sam, shush. It's for Rachel in case she comes back here. But Charlie says everyone's getting together at the hall. Rachel's at the camp. She'll be fine. Rachel, darling, anyway, listen, as I was saying, we're going to be at the village hall. We'll wait there for you. I think it's best if you just stay put and mind what Mrs Graves tells you. We love you, darling. Bye. You finished? Right, grab that bloody case and let's get moving. Come on. Bloody thing! Jesus! Come on, not now! Jesus, come on, you bastard! Start! Start, you bastard! Come on! Ah. Stephen! Your mother, answer me. Stephen!
you see the observatory from there? That's over the ridge, just past the windmill. Oh. You want to live near the station in case you need a quick getaway? Something like that. <laughs> so you and Steven, I'm sensing there's not a lot of love lost there, huh? That's between him, me, and the caves. You're gonna have to explain that one for me. It's nobody else's business. Look, you seem all right to me. You don't want to worry about that lot in the village. Provided I'm left alone, I'm happy. Steven's the one who likes to be at the center of things. <laughs> no change there, then. <laughs> Francis Appleton. You are a bad man. No wonder your sister won't talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> It's a byproduct of the attempt to communicate. It's getting smarter. It's learning as it adapts. I'm confident of a breakthrough soon. Breaker, Breaker 9, call in on 9. This is Lost Cowboy looking for anyone out there. Hello? Breaker 1-9. Breaker travel in Sherlock. Charlie, you out there? Over. My, my Hello? Family, my my wife and kids. Yeah, I'm perfectly well what you've got to do. I can't do it. Don't ask me to do it. You're asking me to sign their death warrant. My own family. Damn it, don't you think I'm aware of that? I'll still be here when you drop the fucking stuff. No. Don't you lecture me about no. sacrifice, you, you spineless of a shit. You stupid bastards. If you're so full of ideas, you come here and try dealing with it. Tell them the time when we had a choice is over. Tell them to do it. You've got to do it now.
Wade called me in about six. up on Stephen. He doesn't understand. Even if he were here to experience it directly, I'm still not sure he would. There has to be a way of consolidating, of offering reciprocal amplification to the signal. I never mentioned anything about them sickening yesterday. I checked them last night on the way back and they were fine. I woke up this morning and the whole lot had gone. Tell me, Charlie, have you heard any birds today? Well, I've not really been paying any attention. That sister of mine reckons they're dropping out the sky all round the Reekin. And Dr. Wade reckons there's sick folk all over the village. Meg said not to bother trying to get deliveries out. Set the quarantine in the whole valley. I reckon it's best we just sit it out. It'll all come right, Frank. This'll all come right? Yeah, right. I am sorry about your cows, Frank. But when things settle down, they'll see you all right. There's got to be provision for this sort of thing. You want to listen to the radio more? Things don't seem like they're settling down at all. I tell you, Charlie. 
Something big is happening. God's sake, stop! Keep back, you bastard. I know what you've done. Where's Lizzie? Where is she? I've got to find her. You stay away. Someone's got to warn them. Someone's got to stop it. You can't stop it. You have to understand. You hate me, I get that. But if we don't do this, it's not just the valley, it's everything, Frank. It's all gone. You're talking bollocks. You can't stop it! Jesus! You take one step closer, I'll bash your bloody skull in, I swear to God! All right, all right. I'm going. But if you see Lizzie, tell her to get out. There's still time. Please, Frank, for her, not me. If you're that bloody caring, you can save her yourself. Don't you get it? I have to stay. Someone has to be here to confirm that everyone is dead.
save them. Just pack a case and meet me at the station. They've closed the lines. Weren't you listening to the radio? Because of the flu. There is no flu, Lizzie. Oh, Christ, Stephen, I'm not stupid. Of course there's no flu. But the stations are still closed. There's an access footpath that runs alongside the main tunnel. You can get out that way. They won't have thought of it. You know what's going on, don't you? You can't use the phone anymore. Well, like you're not using one right now. Funny. Listen. Just don't use the phone after this. No TV or radio either. It can hide in the signal. Oh, you make it sound like it's alive. I don't think we have a word for what it is. Just promise me. Don't tell anyone. Pack quietly. Meet me at the station tomorrow, all right? I feel awful lying and leaving all these people here. It was a brilliant idea about the show. Top marks for that, you clever thing. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. We're not even really talking at the moment, if I'm honest with you. I've been sleeping in one of the empty chalets. Otherwise, we just sit there in silence. And then he goes off and pretends he's not drinking from one of his secret little stashes. And I pretend I ain't noticed. And then when we go to bed, it's all I can do not to scream. I don't know why we're still together. Except I do. I still love him. You remind me of Mary when she was your age. If we'd had a daughter, I'd have been proud if she'd turned out like you. You don't have to say that. Just talk to Robert. Tell him you know he's drinking again. You two can work it out together. I know you oh, can. I wish I had your faith. I just don't want to be the person who stayed because they were afraid to move. I know you can't dwell on the past. I know that, but sometimes you do just think, don't you? What if the accident hadn't happened? I could have been anywhere right now, rather than stuck here, rehearsing Peter Bloody Pan and fixing tumble dryers for the umpteenth time. <laughs> oh, Frank, you are an angel. Don't be that. You're still young, Lizzie. You got plenty of time to be whoever you want to be. Just don't keep using that leg of yours or that husband as an excuse. Quite something, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You ever seen anything like it? They must be well happy at the observatory place. They're probably all partying there right now. This is right, Boston. <laughs> it is. 
Right. That's me short leash. Kids up bar for night. Bloody teething. Mrs. will kill me if I'm gone too long. <laughs> Good night, Ned. No, I... shouldn't be smoking, you know. Not in your condition. <laughs> it's David's fault. He got me started again. I'm not going to try and stop you, but the weather's looking pretty rough. There's a storm coming. That's what Stephen said. He said he'll meet me, but there's things he has to do first. He seems to think that all of this is connected to him. I don't know. I I'm going anyway, whether he comes or not. I'm assuming Stephen has thought of a way through the quarantine. Well, he's clever. you got to give him that. Do you trust him, though? Well, I love him. So I'd hope that was good enough. I hope so, too. Listen, if you can't get through, for whatever reason, I'm uh, getting people together at the village hall, rounding up stragglers, that sort of thing. Yeah, I've got all the campers together here, doing a show. Peter Pan. The kids love it. It'll take their minds off things. Hey, did you see that?
he found it like this? Yeah. I got into the habit of checking in first thing in the morning just to make sure he's had his pills. Mr. Coles is not a well man, Elizabeth. It's entirely possible he upped and wandered off. If things progressed, the mind can be a fragile thing, you know? It's just not very like him, that's all I'm saying, Doctor. He never misses the mid-morning bingo. He didn't smoke, did he? Not that I knew of. There's a funny... It's like ash. Well, that, that is odd. Reese cleaned in here yesterday afternoon. I'll have to have a word. It's not like cigarette ash. Strange. Dr. Wade, there's just been a phone call. We need it back at the village. Apparently, Mrs. Barton has disappeared. This is a public service announcement from Haverton District Council Emergency Measures Committee. Road and rail closures are being implemented to help contain the outbreak of influenza. Please remain calm and indoors. Local community leaders, head teachers, scoutmasters, and members of the clergy will act as your representatives during this period. Be sure to report any symptoms of illness.
I found another dead bird over at the swimming pool. That's the fourth one this morning. Did you fish it out? Yeah. Did you get a chance to think about that pay rise? Oh, I'm sorry, Reese. I've been a little bit busy. Oh, Rachel. Sorry I'm late, Mrs. Graves. I was packing away the tennis thing. Did you check Mr. Cole Shelley again like I asked you to? He's not back yet. I haven't seen him either. Do you think he went into town? Maybe. Yeah, something Only like that. Only the dentists were booked in for a 4.30 tennis session, but they didn't show up. So I went to their chalet. You know, they always take the one near the campfire, but they weren't there either. I think maybe they went into the village for a hoover bag and might have given Mr. Cole a lift. A hoover bag? Why on earth would they do that? Well, I think maybe Mrs. Denton was hoovering and the bag broke, so they had to get another one. Because there's this dust all over this chalet. 